Hello, everybody. This is Shah Parali. Aja aja jind shami aane ke tale, aja zari wale nile azmaane ke tale. And we're here today for the Shapura Law Show. Thank you for listening to us. And just to announce to everybody, uh, next month is going to be our first half anniversary of Shapura Law Show. And it's going to fall on the Independence Day. And we're going to have a special program on that day. It's going to be July 4th. And uh, so today, if you want to call at the studio, the, the, the lunch will be open in 10 minutes. And you can call us on one 855 Seven seven two eight two seven eight one eight five five seven seven two eight two seven eight, and today I thank Saad. She is on board uh, on the board with me, and um, and thank Pravaswani for the opportunity to talk to all of you. And uh, feel free to call. And uh, the number to my office is five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. So um, what? Um, I am going to talk today is about um, national interest waivers. Um, for those who don't know, uh, we deal with immigration law and debt settlement at the law firm. And we have handled hundreds of cases and we have great reviews and I'm very proud of my team on that. Uh, you can check our website to read more on piralilaw.com, P-E-E-R-A-L-L-Y-L-A-W.com, or you can also check usimmigrationquestion.com usimmigrationquestion.com it will bring you to the same website uh, I've talked a lot in the past about employment based immigration uh, about H-1Bs, L visas, EB2, EB3 but there's one thing that is very very interesting uh, that many people have not really looked into are, are the visas where you don't need an employer oh, when, when you're talking about H-1Bs when you're talking about uh, L visas, you need an employer. Uh, for most people who know those visas, uh, you need an employer to be able to petition for you. However, there are few ways in the United States that you can enter without having an employer. And, um, and if you qualify for those, you might, not, you might be able to get in here very soon. One of them is EB1A and two is the National Interest Waiver. Um, I am going to talk about EB1A in a few minutes, but... Um, in the meantime, I'm going to talk about National Interest Waiver. Uh, as I was mentioning earlier, you can call us live. The number to call is one 8278 with any immigration question or debt settlement. And the second half of our, of our show, I'm going to talk a little bit about debt settlement because this is getting really, really um, hot right now because a lot of people are in financial uh, problems. And they don't know if they can file a bankruptcy or they want to file a bankruptcy. And, and they don't know if they are going to debt consolidation companies and how we tackle with those cases at the office, what's the difference, how it works, and things like that. So let us start with the national interest waiver. What is, f uh, first of all, a national interest waiver? A national interest waiver is for advanced degree or exceptional ability workers who are seeking an exemption from the labor certification and a job offer requirement. Okay. That means in this in, in a national interest waiver, you don't need the regular process of a labor certification and you don't also need a job offer. I repeat that. That means you don't need an employer. And I just wanted to mention all the national interest waivers so far we have filed has been uh, have been approved. So we are very proud of our team and I say a special thank to Has uh, thanks to Hassan for uh, doing an excellent job. And um, we can um, we can have a, we can analyze your case if you qualify for national interest waiver. If you give us a call at the office, 510-742-5887, 510-742-5887. I know I, I have a lot of listeners in on the East Coast. Uh, you can listen also see us on webcam live on the Shah Pirali Law Show, Shah Pirali Law Show, and um, we c we will be glad to answer your question. And the toll number is a free number, so you can call us live on there. So, uh, the labor certification, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, that is required usually to get a green card in the United States is, is usually discussed, uh, and um, if you check our website, you can, it's discussed usually under the EB2 or the EB3 program. And I'm not going to go into those. Uh, the EB2 program uh, has its own rules and EB3 has its own rules. Uh, unfortunately, if you're born in India, 
either your EB2 or EB3, you still have to wait for a long time to get your green card. However, the EB2 goes faster. So, in order for you to be qualified for a national interest waiver, you ha you, uh, the requirements of an EB2 needs to be present. That means you have to have a bachelor's degree plus a post baccalaureate five years experience. And when I'm saying a bachelor's degree, it, it is a bachelor's equivalent in the United States. Uh, it's not a three years bachelor's degree. It has to be equivalent of four years in the United States. And you have to have five years of experience, which is post baccalaureate, which is after the bachelor. Or you can have a master's degree plus, a three, plus three years of experience, or even a master's degree, and the experience has to be post baccalaureate. That means the experience just after the, the bachelor will count, even if it's not after the master's. So uh, that's one of the first requirements, the EB2, to qualify under the EB2. So, but there are basic, uh, very, very important issues that you have to understand about the national interest waiver. Um, there are few there's a test that they have they have uh, they have made and that test comes from a case um, from the New York State uh, Transit um, okay I'm, I'm forgetting the case exactly now but there's a case that they use to do those tests and that it's a three prong test um, the test basically first the applicant must work in an area that has substantial in intrinsic merit substantial intrinsic intrinsic merit uh, Another way, basically, to say that is uh, a reasonable person will just say, hey, this is a job that is very, very, very important. It can be important in a specific community. For example, we have handled a case from a gentleman from Pakistan where we, we, made, uh, we made USCIS understand that this person is needed in the community because there are a lot of Indians and Pakistan in the, in the community, and he writes uh, articles about social issues and it is a requirement to have it's very important to have this person in the United States and the other important part is that it has to be of national scope that means it has to be important for for the, the whole probably the whole United States so you have one community here one community there one community because we a South Asians are spread all around the country right so it makes it easy for, for, for us to prove the national uh, scope in there. Um, not easy, but it makes, uh, it makes good sense to do that. Then we have to prove that the applicant's continued work in the, re in the area by nature or of his or her proven accomplishments and potential to make a future, have potential to make future contributions, that it justifies a waiver of the labor certification requirement. The reason they call it the National Interest Waiver is because you don't have to go the system of labor certification. For those who know, it's a painful uh, step in the green card process, um, those who have gone through it. And if you don't get a good lawyer to help you on that, it becomes more painful. So uh, with the National Interest Waiver, you will be able to, um, to go through the, without going through the labor certification. You will be able to go through the step uh, real straight to the I-140. Um, when can I obtain uh, an EB2 visa based on a national interest waiver? That's a big question, right? Um, well, there's no time to, to wait, really, uh, unless you are from a country where the visa numbers are retrogress. Unfortunately, we are dealing, most of our clients are from India, and there is a retrogression. So even if you get the I-140 approved, you will still have to wait for your green card. Uh, the process is very simple. The green card uh, number is issued by the State Department, but the USCIS approves the I-140. So if you are not from Pakistan, then you can, you can no, Pakistan, I'm sorry, if you're not from India, for example, you're from Pakistan, you're from Fiji, you're from Sri Lanka, you're from Tibet, you're from Nepal, you might be able to obtain it uh, right away so that you can file not only the I-140, but also the adjustment of status if you're in the United States. And um, what are the advantages, basically, of filing that? Well, even if you're from India and you are filing under this uh, National Interest Waiver, you still have a, an issue with the, with the EB2. Be, um, you still can file for the National Interest Waiver. The reason for that is that you can avoid one, you can avoid the labor certification, and two, you don't have to have enough uh, and a job offer for it. I repeat that. That means you don't have to have an employer. You can file it on your own. It's a self-petition. 
And the number to call today is 1-855-772-8278, 1-855-772-8278. You can ask us any, any kind of legal questions and we will be glad to, to answer your questions. So what, let us continue now uh, on, the, on, the, on the National Trust Waiver and how uh, it is important. I think we have one caller. Let us take the caller. Hello. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Hello. Hello you're live on air. This is Shah Purali. Hi, Shah. How are you? I'm doing well, sir. I'm doing well. What can I do for you? Uh, just got a quick question for you. You mentioned about the bachelors and you mentioned about the masters. Yes. And you didn't mention about a person has a PhD. Yes. A PhD is different. I'm not talking about an EB, uh, EB1 here, uh, EB1A. The National Trust Waiver is interesting if you are, but you don't need to have a PhD to get a National Trust Waiver, by the way. Okay? So the EB1A you, uh, in, in a PhD is, is, is kind of very important, but I'm talking only about National Trust Waiver here. But a PhD, of course, is better than, than having a master's and a, a bachelor. So you, you form part of the good category. But then my question is about the work experience. Uh, if you got you know, for masters, you need less, like two years. Well, this is where a very good question. According to the Department of Labor, you have to have three years of experience plus the masters. However, when it comes to USCIS, a masters will do. So what happens is that once you get the labor certification approved and you go on the I one forty level, even you don't have the experience, you can still qualify for EB two. But in this case, it would be hard to get a national interest waiver without experience. It won't make sense. Okay? Well, okay, all right. Thank Good you. luck to you. Call me if you have more detailed questions on 510-742-5887. Uh, the last caller gave, uh, asked us a very technical question. And I'm sorry, I had to answer it very technically because uh, it's only for those who understand a little bit how the system works. They will understand what I'm talking about here. It's, it's not complicated. It's just uh, it's, it's a lot of laws uh, combined in one. But you can call us on any question. If you have marriage petitions questions, citizenship questions, you can call us on one 855 and if you want to keep your questions confidential, you can call the office 510-742-5887. 510-742-5887. Um, what are the limitations now of a national interest waiver? Um, I was mentioning that uh, earlier. Uh, uh, for one, the uh, national interest waiver, of course, uh, goes faster and doesn't require the labor certification. Uh, the national interest waiver is appropriate only if it makes sense, okay? You don't want to just file a national interest waiver uh, just because you think it's, it is going to work for you. What happens is that it costs money to do it. It's a lot of work. And if you file it and then you come back getting a denial, then you rely on that. You didn't do a labor certification. It can, it can hurt you. And you know how the labor certification works. It's, it's, it's a very um, daunting task, but you have certain time to file it. So... Um, don't file it if you don't see at least you qualify for most of it. And that's what we do. We charge a fee, of course. We will analyze it, evaluate it for you because it's a lot of work to evaluate it. But we can at least tell you if there's a chance of doing it. If there's no chance, we won't file it. But the good thing is that, A, if, you're, if you want to know what are the uh, advantages, but the biggest advantage is you don't have to, um, to find an employer. And also the big advantage is you bypass the labor certification process. And wh why you will need a lawyer to do that is very simple. It's a lot of legal jumbo there. And uh, we have done enough of them that we know the, the issues involved. Okay, I have two callers. Let me take the callers. This is Shah Parali. You're live on air. Uh, hi, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing well, sir. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing good, sir. So my name is... Uh Kiran, sir, and actually I'm working for a non-profit organization, organization from last three years. Yes. Uh, I came on master's, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did my master, like I disconnected my master's and uh, I, uh, what do you call, uh, I, I applied on, uh, what do you call, bachelor's on uh, H-1B. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting to file my green card with this company. Yes. So I'm wondering, like, uh, which is the right way to go, whether I should wait, like, another two years to, what do you call, to qualify for EB-2 or... Okay, uh, very interesting question. Any experience that you gain, unless there, there is an exception though, that you gain from that same company, and if that company is going to petition for you, cannot be used, okay? You can use experience from company A and use it on company B, but you cannot use it with company A itself, 
okay so oh, uh, unless that so you have taken a substantial uh, change in your your job it's a little bit it's not complicated but you have to understand the concept they won't allow you to use that experience that you obtained with that company right now to move on an eb2 so remember that okay oh okay so so in my case like this is the only company i was working uh, since i came to united states so i i was in my third year of h1 uh, from with this company so now i'm thinking to file my h what you call green card mm -hmm. so my, i'm thinking like whether i should go for what you call five years of experience and go to eb2 or or shall i start my what you call green card process right now well this is a very good question i will advise you to to file asap However, if you're planning to use experience from that company that you came in and, and, and file with them, you won't be able to use it. So you are kind of in a cash rented situation. It's always good to get an EB2. What I would advise, just for the safe side, if you get a chance to file with them, I will advise you to file it because you never know. They might sometimes, I, I've seen cases in 2007, ex 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 except, um, especially they had this opening on July and everybody got in. So. If you file right now on the EB3, nothing, nothing prevents you down the road to find a second, file a second labor certification with another company under EB2. So I will advise you to file it as soon as possible because you never know what might happen down the road and it can come and harm you, okay? Okay, sounds good. Thanks, sir. Good luck to you. And if you have questions, yeah. call me at the office, 510-742-5887, okay? Sure, I'll call you. Good yeah. luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Sharp Raleigh. You're live on air. Uh, hi. Uh, I have a uh, question for you. Yes. Uh, this is Raj. Uh, hi, Raj. I'm traveling to uh, India. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter has a uh, U.S. Uh, passport and then uh, her um, and then PIO card. Yes. Her uh, passport is valid till November, uh, less than six months. Is it uh, okay to travel to India with uh, less than six months valid passport? You mean... The, what what do you have? You have a an uh, approved. Uh, you have an adjustment of status. You have an EP. Uh, no, no, uh, no uh, myself, uh, my wife, we have the green card. Yes. Uh, my daughter is a U.S. citizen. Yes. And then uh, her passport is expiring in November. Yes. Um, and and, and you want to tra you want to travel, right? Yeah, she has a PIO card. Yeah. But it's okay to travel. The summer I read the passport has to be valid for six months. Yeah, it doesn't really apply for U.S. citizens. It's good if you could renew it before you go, but no, they will let her in. Just be careful, don't come back, or if in case you're stuck there, let's say for whatever reason, uh, yeah. what you should do, you should go to the U.S. consulate and ask them for an extension of the passport. She's a U.S. citizen. They will give her priority, and they, they will do something for her. So, But it's better you renew it, just why you want to take the chances. But I, I don't see any problem for U.S. citizens, okay? Oh, okay, so even uh, because... Only for a visa is a six months, or even if she has a PIO card, still the six months is. Uh, well, I don't know for India. I'm talking about coming back to the U.S. India, oh, okay. I don't know. I, unfortunately, I'm not licensed there. I can only guide you a little bit, but I'm not. I'm not very much familiar with the law there. But I oh. can only tell you it won't affect the, her to come back in the United States. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Good luck to you. Okay. okay. Thank you Bye. very much. This is Shapira. You are live on air. Yes, sir. I have a question for my mom. Yes. Uh, she came in uh, like 2005 on green card and uh, she yeah. went back home and she never came back. So can I apply for like re-entry visa for her? She came, she went back home for how many years? Yes, until then, like she stayed with us only two years and after that, you know, she never came back. Oh, no. What happens, you have to reapply for a new green card for her. You're a U.S. citizen, right? I am. Yeah, you, she probably lost the green card. It would be easier for you to refile the whole thing. Unless she was very sick there or you can prove there was some emergency, she had to stay long and it's going to be a headache. The problem is that after you pass six months and after you pass one year, you come back, there is a big chance that your green card is, uh, is cancelled. It's, uh, it's called abandonment of the green card. We have a very good article on our website on this. It's called Guide for Those Traveling on, on Green Card and also a YouTube video. Where you which you can find on youtube.com/slash Pirali Law, and um, 
I will advise you just to be on the safe side to avoid the hassle that she will have at the airport or they put her in deportation when she comes at the airport is to refile a new green card. She probably lost it now. She doesn't have it anymore, unfortunately. It's been more than one year, so it's going to be tough. Okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. There are exceptions to that rule, though. Uh, if you want me to analyze it, give me a call at the office. And the number is 510-742-5887. I think we have another caller, right? This is Shapirali. You are live on air. Hi, this is Shrida Zumbala. Hi, Shrida. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, um, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, uh, um, I'm into eighth year of my H-1B with an extension on my approved 140 and labor. Yes. Okay. And my employer, the current employer has cancelled my uh, H-1B. Mm. And because I came on 16th of Ju uh, June uh, from India from, uh, from a vacation and 17th, the USCIS has opened uh, my case. For cancellation. Mm. So, what would be my case? As of now, I have a project contract, but uh, my new employer would mm. be employer would be, he be able to get an extension for H one B? Well, if your I one forty is cancelled, no, you won't be getting it. But uh, no, I forty five was filed for you, right? No, four eighty five was not filed. One forty okay. is still there, but it's my H one B which is cancelled. How was your H one B cancelled? You say? Oh, they cancelled your H-1B. But this is a problem. The H-1B in your case is attached to the I-140 because you're going on the seven year and above. Yes. So it needs to have that I-140 still alive. As long as the I-140 has not been revoked, uh, you, you can go ahead and file an extension with another company. So uh, company B also can, can, can take advantage of that. But it all depends on company A. If you want, give me a call at the office. I can check exactly where you stand. But most of the time when you leave company A, they don't want to keep the I-140. However, you maintain the priority date, but you don't maintain the I-140, okay? My 140 is not cancelled, but do I have to uh, travel out, uh, out outside US? Yes, if you, have, if you have a lapse in between and less than 180 days, if you have to lapse or even of one day, you have to travel and do a counselor processing. Yes, that's the okay. way it's done, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Good luck to you. This is Shah Rally. you're live on air. Hi, uh, am I talking to Shah? Yeah, this is Shah. Hi, Shah, thank you for taking my call. I have, uh, I have a question regarding my immigration status. Yes, I'm listening to you, sir. Go ahead. So, I, have, I had an approved I-140 with company A, mm -hmm. and then I moved to company B uh, with the hope that, you know, I could use the file uh, with, with company A when, when we start to file uh, with the company B. Yes. Hello? Hello, I, I think I lost you. Uh, yeah, just call us back, one eight five five seven seven two eight two seven eight, and I think I can guess what is going to be the question. Basically, they cancel the I-140. Uh, the priority date doesn't get cancelled. I'll repeat that. The priority date doesn't get cancelled. You can keep it forever. However, the I-140 can be cancelled unless there was an I-485 I attached to it, and you have 180 days, 180 days have passed, and you move to a um, similar or... Uh, same or similar position then you can do an ac21 move okay so i think we have another caller okay so go ahead you can call us again i'm sorry for that i think your call drop out one eight five five seven seven two eight two seven eight let me take the call this is shapra you are live on air uh hi i hi. have a question about h1b transfer yes go ahead so i'm basically uh, going to be changing employers Mm -hmm. Right now, um, I have a valid H-1B with my current employer. Yes. My new employer has filed for the LCA. Yes. Um, but um, uh, we, he, 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 they filed it last week, so they still haven't gotten an approval for that. So they haven't been able to file for the H-1B transfer yet. Yes. Um, and my last day of employment is going to be 4th of July. Yes. So uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to, they'll be able to file for the H-1B uh this whole 4th of July or not since the LCA Okay, not yet. this is a rule. First of all, it's not your employment. It's if your employer, let's say you're working for employer A, you're moving for employer B. Employer yeah. A has to affirmatively, affirmatively cancel that, that H1B for you. If they have not okay. canceled it yet, you can still move on. Um, there are ways to do that. If you give me a call at the office, I can, I can review your case. And the lawyer should be able to do that for you really quickly, file it. Otherwise, you will have to leave and do a counselor processing, okay? Okay. Okay, okay. good Thank luck you. to you. The number Thanks. to my office is 510-742-5887. And the website is piralilaw.com, P-E-E. -E. 
R A L L Y Law L A W dot com and you can also check US Immigration Question dot com US Immigration Question dot com. Um I think we have another caller. This is Shah Purali, you're live on air. Uh, hi Shah, this is Fadish. Hey Fadish, how are you? Uh, hi, good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. What can I do for you? Uh, actually, my question is like, uh, I was working for a company here, like two years back, and they filed my GC under EB3. Yes. And uh, now I actually am working for company B, and uh, now my company A was uh, uh, like the right to file under EB2. But uh, can I use the company A's experience for filing EB2? Because I already left the company, right? Now I'm, I'm working for a different company. So can I use that company experience now again? Well, that's a very, very good question. Uh, I assume not, because if they are going to file it for you. However, if they take you in a different position, you might be able to show a substan substantial difference in the in the job. You might be able to use it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have all the facts in front of me. Uh, if you give me a call at the office, I'll be glad to analyze. But this is a very good question. It's the first time I kind of have to research it for you, <laughs> because uh, technically you cannot, but since you left, now you're going back to A, then they're putting you in a different position. You should be able to use it, but it, you have to do it in a very smart way. But I, I think you should be able to do it, but I'm not 100% sure on this one. So I would like you to give me a call at the office. Let me research it for you, okay? Okay, sure. Thanks a lot. Good luck to you. I'm, I'm sorry, sometimes I don't know it all. <laughs> this yeah, is Sharp no, okay. yeah. Ali. You're live on air. Hello? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, I have a quick question. So yes. if if somebody leaves the country and their advance parole expires and they don't have an H1, uh, they're in the adjustment of status, their 140 is cleared. So mm -hmm. what are the ways to get that person back? They're outside the country? Yes. And the advance parole is expired? Yes. Yeah, that's a bad bad thing uh, because technically they can claim that that person has abandoned the 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 adjustment of status. What I will advise you is to see if there's a possibility of refiling a new H-1B on their case and get them back in and see if we can uh, revive the adjustment of status. So How long so has a, a person been outside? What? I'm sorry? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed it. There's a possibility of... You might want to be able to, you might want to do an H-1B to get that person back in because the problem is that uh, without the advance parole, they won't let them in. And without the advance parole also, technically that person has abandoned the adjustment of status. But if the, if the person is on an H-4 visa and the husband of the person has... Uh, That's fine. No more on H-1 and they are on actually uh, That's perfect. They just get them on H-4 back. And then just revive. Once they come back here, then you reapply for the advance parole. But how can you? But can you apply an H4 even if you don't have an H1 valid H1? No. How are you going to do that? The H4 has to be deployed. Uh, you need that person to have an H1. Then you file the H4. But the H1 is uh, he doesn't have H1 anymore. He's on a 485. Yeah. Uh, in this case, I will advise you to get on an H1, get them on H4, and then revive it, and then get the the advance parole, and then you can leave again. How come they let that expire? This is uh, this is not right. Yeah, it's a medical and they could not travel. Ah, okay. Well, one thing they can do, give me a call at the office. They might be able to go to the U.S. consulate and explain and show that there was a medical emergency if they will grant them an extension on their advance parole. They might be able to do it. They don't usually do it, but if it is really urgent, they might be able to do it. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Good luck to you. Okay. I am going to go ahead. Um, take. Um, give me one minute. I will take some more calls. I wanted like to get into our next subject. The next subject is something very interesting that people keep asking me question is debt settlement what is debt settlement and what is happening in this um, you can check online on our debt settlement this is another service we provide to the community the debt settlement is on your debt settlement attorney.com your debt settlement attorney.com uh, basically what we are talking here are for people who don't want to file for a bankruptcy and who still have a lot of debts on their and their head uh, so far, I'm very, very proud to say if you check the success stories, we have almost 100% uh, success stories on those. People will come to us owe a lot of money on credit card and then they don't know what to do because they have to pay their, their credit card or put money on the table to eat. What we are doing is basically we get the debt out of your head and get it basically out by settling with, uh, with your creditor. 
what we're talking here is not debt consolidation. We are not trying to combine all your debts and then make you pay monthly or something like that. No, it's a one time or maybe sometimes they break it in two, three times without any financial charges and they go ahead and they, they will settle with us. Uh, for example, I have clients, uh, I will read a little bit from our success stories. If you read there on your debt settlement attorney.com, a client came to, to see us. He owed Bank of America $32,000 on one card and another card $37,000. We, we had to negotiate this for a long time and we, we got a settlement for the client for $8,100. For, actually, it was one was for Chase, one was for Bank of America. The Chase one was settled for $8,100. Uh, he owed actually $32,000 and the Bank of America was settled for $11,100 and uh, the rest is pretty much uh, written off however there might be some tax implications which are not huge if you get a good cpa you can deal with that our uh, but at least that person saved almost um we're talking about twenty twenty four thousand dollars almost on one and the other one almost twenty six thousand um, dollars this is what we do in debt settlement we negotiate those debts we have a great team and you can read a little bit more about debt settlement is on your debt settlement attorney.com your debt settlement attorney.com and you can um, read what is a debt settlement how it works uh, let me take another caller i think we have another caller waiting okay, okay. so um, i i think uh, we, we lost the caller so i'm going to go ahead and keep talking about debt settlement um i will um talk to you about some rules that has been coming out from the ftc now it's controlled by the federal trade commission so for one, a lot of debt settlement companies out there have been cheating people. They took their money, put them in a trust account, and they tell them, okay, in three years, we're going to settle your debt, so you have to pay me to service you. Most of the people try their best to, to put the money in the trust account, but they end up by not putting enough money to, to the settlement. And guess what? They lose the deal, plus they lose the money that they pay to the debt settlement company. So what I'm... Um, what we do, we are a law firm, first of all. We are not a debt settlement company. We are lawyers negotiating with other lawyers. Uh, what happens when you owe on a credit, what happens when you owe on a credit card is that if you owe, they're not going to leave you alone. Not anymore. They will go after you with a collection agency. And if a collection agency cannot get the money or the collection agency itself will go ahead and file a lawsuit against you. What happens next after the lawsuit? Once they get a judgment against you, they will be able to garnish your check. That means take money from your wages. They will be able to levy your bank account. If you have money in the bank, they will be able to put a lien on that. And if you have equity in your house, they will put equity on your house. And also now many people are calling us in the office where they lost their house on foreclosure and they have a second loan. Don't think when you lost the house on a foreclosure, the second loan is gone. No way. Uh, unless you file a bankruptcy, or you clear that they will come after you and they are getting very 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 aggressive we deal with a lot of those companies that do the collections we know them very well and they know we are genuine also we don't cheat our clients they give us good deals at the same time they are telling us they are growing because they just hired they took new buildings they hired more people to do their collections and it's getting tough and tough on people because the bank will not stop calling them so this is where we come in we can help for one, as a lawyer, once you hire us, we got the advantage of being able to, to put what we call a cease and desist letter. A cease and desist letter is basically under the Fair Collection uh, Practices Act. It basically protects the, the, the creditors from harassing you on the phone. And at, po at the point when we put a letter as a lawyer, they will have to deal with us. They can still send you letters, but they cannot call you at odd times, call your neighbors and things like that. So it's very, very important that you know what they can do to you. And also, you can negotiate your debts on your own. That's for sure. You can talk to them and try to work something. But most of the time, they won't give you a good deal. And two, you don't know the law, so they will take advantage of you. I have clients, uh, I heard they threaten them of criminal. Uh, uh, well, listen, they're not my clients, but I heard for a few people, they threaten them of criminal um, prosecution. Well, they cannot criminally prosecute you because a debt is a civil matter unless there's fraud. I repeat that. And some people, they call their neighbors and come and harass them. This is not allowed too. However, they are trying. Credit cards are fighting more and more to make those laws possible where they can call your neighbor and tell your neighbor about your story. So just be careful. Having a lawyer by your side will make the difference. And so far, like I said, our success rate is so high. We have handled now almost 200 cases and, and I don't remember any of them where we have not gotten a deal. 
all of them we got deals and you can see on the website the kind of, uh, of, of testimonials we get and anybody who has done debt settlement with us can testify and will tell you that the our work is really impeccable and we treat you really nicely and the good news is that we don't charge you any fees unless we get a deal for you when it comes to debt settlement i'm not talking immigration law here i'm talking debt settlement we don't charge you until we get a deal i think we have one caller let me take the caller this is sharp Raleigh. you're live on air uh, hello hello how are you I'm doing well, so I'm doing well. What can I do for you? Yeah, uh, my daughter is a U.S. citizen, yes. and next month we are going back to India. Yes. Uh, can I apply a PIO card in India? Is this possible? I don't know. I'm not an Indian lawyer. <laughs> Unfortunately, you need to get a lawyer in India who can help you on that, or call the Indian embassy. I am licensed oh, to practice law in oh. in United States, but no, this is oh. not. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a, it's outside my jurisdiction. I'm not allowed to give advice on this, but I can so guide you. But uh? and one more question: uh, mm. How many years you can stay in India? Uh, uh, U.S. citizen, you can stay forever, whenever you want to, <laughs> as long as you want to. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck to you. Uh, have a nice day. You too. Bye. So, um, I was talking. We have another caller. This is Shapur Ali. You're live in here. Hello. <laughs> Hey, how are you, Vindaji? Oh, Paji, it's still on them. Where's it going, Paji? Yeah, I was not here a little bit, but I'm, we miss you. Thank you for listening. You're still listening, huh? <laughs> yeah, I always. I always thank you, I thank always. you, thank you for listening. You're a great guy. We really appreciate when you call, okay? okay. Take care, well. Okay. So, yes, I was talking about that, and the, uh, uh, a, a caller just asked the question, what do you think uh, if uh, how long you can stay outside when you're US citizen well it's not limited it's not um, you can stay as long as you want however if you want to f petition for someone uh, then you will have a problem on the domicile uh, the affidavit of support might have some problems and if you need help on those call me on 510 742 5887 and for all your debt settlement issues call us on 510 Seven four two five eight eight seven. Um, I was mentioning a little bit about how debt settlement works, but uh, many people get confused because they go and they see on TV you have those big companies coming on TV and telling them, "Oh, you know what? Go give us your money, do that, and do that. We will be able to do that, do that for you." But the truth of them, many of them have been scamming people. That's why the Federal Trade Commission came into the picture and in 2010 started shutting a lot of them down. Because most of them have been cheating people, and I know personally few of them, where, where they have cheated people and openly, and they, they always laugh about it. But what happens is that they take your money, they tell you they will do a debt settlement, but they don't. They are not able to do it. First of all, they're not lawyers; they just make up stories. They keep your money for a long time, and they charge you a fee to service that money. This is where they make their money. They charge that service fee, and that service fee you will never get back. You might get your money that you put in a trust account back. But you will never get your money back uh, on the service fees. And you and what they do at the end, when you are not able to service that account by yourself, they will sometimes return you the money or don't return you anything. And guess what? Just too bad. You're in a worst case scenario because you owe the credit card already for like so many months. They have piled up interest on that. They have piled up sometimes attorney charges and et cetera, et cetera. And guess what? You end up by having to either file bankruptcy, which is sometimes a good solution bankruptcy, but you end up by losing so much money. We don't do the same thing. Most of our cases get closed within maximum six months. Um, we get them done. We make a deal for you. It's your responsibility to pay them. And so far, all our clients have paid them well. And that's one reason they, they also work with us because we get them deals. And, and that's what makes the difference. So um, if you have any problems with your debts, uh, either for your second mortgage or credit cards, Give us a call. I mean, second, we don't do loan modification. I repeat that. But we can help you on the second mortgage loans. Or if your house have been foreclosed, they're going after you. Or your credit cards. Credit cards, we have settled a lot of them. And we have another caller. Let me take the caller. This is Sharp Raleigh. You're live on air. Hi. Good afternoon, Sharp Good afternoon. Raleigh. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, my husband's uh, uh, green card status. Yes, go ahead. I'm uh, just, to last, just last week, uh, he has sent his papers for EB1 yes. EB1 processing. So I just want to know when will we know that his I140 or 
what do I, uh, okay. do what I do? kind of EB1 did you do? Did you do EB1A, EB1B, or EB1C? Do you know? Uh, he actually is into research PhD, so I don't know which category oh. it is. Is it the university that applied for him? No, it's a company applied for him. He applied on his own? Company applied for him. Oh, then it's probably an L1A. Yeah, it will take, uh, you will get an answer within that, but you should get a receipt pretty soon. Did they file the I-45 also for you? Uh, no, they applied I-140 right now, so... Okay, they didn't do that for you. They could have done the I-45 or 45. You should have an answer on the I-140 within three months to, to five months. But this is what's good about EB1A. You can file the adjustment of status and get a work permit for all of you. You, your husband, and everything. So, as a company, if they will allow you to file the I-4, it's not too late. You can still file the adjustment of status. So if you have, if you want me to assess it, you can give me a call at the office five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. Okay. And uh, uh, actually, he was planning to travel to other country uh, next month. So is it okay to travel? Uh, it all depends. I don't know exactly what what he has. If he has an H one B or L one, he can yeah, travel. Yeah, he, he has he has H one B and he is planning to go to Mexico. So. Yeah, he, he should be able to travel unless there are problems on his case. Uh, I will advise you to talk to your attorney who is handling the case. Otherwise, uh, give me a call at the office. We can analyze if it is risky for him to travel. But I don't see any problem for him to so travel. So you have to go and stamp for H1B status? Yeah, that's a different story. Right now you're getting into a different thing. If he's going for stamping, I will advise him to talk to his attorney who who's working on the case or give me a call at the office because that's a risky business, okay? Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, good luck to you. Yeah, have a nice day. Have a nice day. The number to my office is 510-742-5887. This is Shabrari, you're live on air. Hello, this is Amartya. Yeah? Hi, Amartya, how are you? I'm good, how about you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. What can I do for you? Uh, I have a question regarding my H1. Yes. Um, I work for a company and the company has gone out for stock sale. Yeah. And the company B which acquired it um, didn't mention my H1 status. Mm -hmm. So I have a family emergency, and if I would travel back to India, mm -hmm. would there be any problem coming back? Yeah, it, this is another good question. There is something called mergers, mergers and acquisitions. We have a very good article on our website on this on PiraliLaw.com. Uh, we need to know what kind of merger was done and if it requires for them to transfer the H-1B or not. Technically, they should not. But if you need, then your H-1B is not valid. If you travel, they will need to file a new H-1B transfer and then get you a counselor processing. So you need to talk to the company attorney or give me a call at the office. Let me analyze if what kind of, uh, of acquisitions was done in this, in this case. Okay? Okay. And the same question goes on the H uh, green card. The um, green card is, is, uh, uh, is, is, um, is pretty much the same, but however, green card, if you have the I-45 already filed, even the company has changed, you can do an AC-21. Is the adjustment of status filed? Uh, no. Um, okay. I, I should have said... Um, yeah. Then you definitely project. need to analyze that, because if, if it is not a good, um, it's not done properly, or it's not within the parameters, your H-1B needs to be transferred, the I-140 is a different question, but it follows pretty much the same role. So give us a call and let me analyze it for you uh, or talk to your company attorney to make sure that they understand how it works. Because some attorneys doesn't have no idea how it works, but we know how it works. Okay? All right, sure. I'll give a call. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 510-742-5887. And we have another caller. This is Sharp Rally. You're live on air. Hi. Uh, this Hi. is Sharmila from San Jose. Hi, Sharmila. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. What can I do for you, Shamila? Yeah, actually, my question is, uh, my husband's company, they filed uh, for him the green card. Uh -huh. And uh, we cleared the I-140. Now we are waiting for the 485. Yes. So the thing is, uh, we are five years uh, in this country. And now they filed the extension because our H-1B is going to expire in uh, 2011, September. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, like... Um, the new H1, the new I I94 is going to be like valid for up to 2014. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can we go to the Mexico and do the stamping from there, or do we need to go our, go back to our home country? No, you don't have to go back to your home country. You can go to Mexico if you're traveling and everything is clean. Uh, yeah, whenever it's not a new H1B, you can always do that. I have a lot of clients who do that. You don't okay. have to really go to Mexico. 
However, it's uh, to Mexico. You don't have to go to India. However, they are they are, they are getting a little bit tricky in Mexico too. So just be careful. Prepare your package well and have a good lawyer review it. And and uh, when you go for the stamping, they don't ask you a lot of question or issue a two twenty one G on it. Okay. 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 And what is that two twenty? 221G is basically they're denying it because they want to review it. They send it back to USCIS. It's a little bit complicated, but um, I I don't know uh, about your case, but I'm pretty sure you should not have any problem, okay? Okay, but I need to go to my home country for the stamping, right? No, I'm not saying you have to go. I said you can go to Mexico. Just make sure the paperwork is prepared right so that oh, from okay. Mexico you don't get stuck there. You have to go back to India, and then it okay. will be more headache, okay? Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. Uh, this is Shapra, you're live on here. Okay, so um, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, we are almost done with the show. We have, I think, 10 minutes more to go. Not even 10 minutes. I think uh, we have like five minutes. So I am. T- I was talking about debt settlement and I was also talking about immigration law. Uh, I'm not going to take any more callers. Uh, I think uh, I was expecting uh, Praveen to call today, but I, I didn't get his call. So um, what I'm thinking is um, about debt settlement. Um if you have any problems with your debt, second loan, credit cards, call me at the office. We have a great team and we have a high success rate. We are not new to that. We have been doing it for for almost two and a half years now and we have been very, very successful. We don't take we take cases where we see their merits, where people are really in trouble and we get them out. And we have hundreds of, of cases to prove for that, the kind of success rate. So far, none of our clients came out, was uh, didn't get anything. Sometimes they get good deals, very good deals. Sometimes they don't get good deals, but they get pretty good deals most of the time. And you can check on our website on yourdebtsettlementattorney.com, yourdebtsettlementattorney.com, and you can read some of the, the huge success stories we have we have been able to get uh, for, for, for our clients. For example, a client owed uh, uh, on an equity line. Okay, one thing also, people called me last time and say, oh, do you do for businesses? Yes, we do for businesses also. If you have a business, you took an, a line of equity and business have gone down, we can help you. We can really help you. Uh, for, uh, for example, we have a client who owed $103,000. It was actually, that loan was being secured by his house and then the house went underwater. We were able to settle this for 10% of its value. That means $10,300. So, that means he he got uh, away with 94 uh, i mean uh, i don't i'm not good in mathematics uh, $93,000 so um you should you should be able to to do that for your cases you can try it on your own but it doesn't work all the time because the collection agencies are very tough they're very mean sometimes and they will know to how to push the right button to get the money from you but for us you know we do that every day so you they know they won't they can use those, those, those switches with this so we can really help you on those and also one thing people have asked me if we're on facebook yes the law show is on facebook you can join us send us an invite we'll be glad to accept it is is facebook.com slash law show l-a-w-s-h-o-w l-a-w-s-h-o-w it's like facebook.com slash for law show send us an invite i will be glad to accept the invite and also we have a youtube channel which has a lot of good stuff it's youtube.com slash pirali law youtube.com backslash pirali law p-e-e R-A-L-L-Y law.com and before I end the show today I wanted to tell everybody um, about our one year anniversary it's been one year we've been on the radio with Parasvani and we're very very proud of that and the feedback we get from our uh, from our listeners is amazing and also we have started a petition for the support of, of human rights and women rights on our website please sign in uh, it's on sh- piralilaw.com. Please click on, on the support SPLG. And uh, we need your support. Your moral support is very important to us. Um, even we are a law firm, we, the way we function for those who have come to our office is more like a family base. And, and your moral support is very important to us. We want to have this. And we want you also to check all our websites. Uh, we have some great websites. Piralilaw.com is a good one. And also your debt settlement attorney. I think we have one caller. Uh, you can also check Immigration Legal Blog. Immigration Legal Blog. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, or even Twitter also. Twitter also is slash Pirali Law. I think we have one caller. Let me check. This is Shah Pirali. You are live on air. 
Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, I'm speaking to Mr. Shah. This is Shah. How are you? Mr. Shah, um, uh, what happened was, uh, my name is Kumar. Yes, Kumar. Yeah. I married, uh, I married a U.S. citizen in 2005. Yes. And then she, uh, she sponsored, I mean, she, she applied for my papers and order that came over here in 2006. Mm-hmm. And then we had some problems and then what happened was, uh, you know, we went to court. We went to Superior Court and then mm-hmm. she managed to get, uh, my wife managed to get a annulment of fraud against me. Okay. Well, I will not advise you. I will not advise you to discuss that on the on the on the radio. Give me a call on the on at the office on five one zero seven four two seven seven four two yeah fifty eight eighty seven five eight seven yes. Okay. Uh, because there are there are a few issues on that that I don't want you to discuss on the on the radio. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, Thank good you luck very to much. you. Yeah. Really, and I think we have one more caller, and then that will be the last caller. This is Shapirali. You are live on air. Uh, hello, sir. I have a question, not on the immigration, but, you know, on the credit card. Yes, uh, go thing. ahead. I don't you can help me on that. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay, so so basically I have a dispute on the credit card, you know, okay. uh, and I'm disputing that. And uh, I don't know, if, if you can help me on that, I can talk to you later on the show, maybe, you know, I can call you directly. Sure. On the Give me a call at the office right now. There's a great team who handles that. Actually, uh, it's Fela who handles that in there. She's very good at it. You can call her right now. She will pick up the phone on 510-742-5887. And there's no consultation when it comes to debt settlement. For immigration, we charge a consultation, but not for debt settlement, okay? So call right now, okay? So what is the last one? Can you repeat that, please, again? 742? Yeah. 742 okay. 5887. Thank you. Okay. And just to let everybody know, we speak different languages in the office. We speak Punjabi, Hindi, Urdu, uh, Arabic. We speak uh, some, um, I don't think we have Farsi anymore. I speak French and Creole and a little bit Urdu. So call if you have a language problem. That's no problem. And I was trying to to, um, to say, uh, I don't know, Saad, how much time I have. I'm left on the, uh, oh, I don't have much time left, so I don't know. Uh, some people were texting me that they couldn't get uh, the line. Uh, I, I apologize for that. Some t- whenever we have our show, sometimes the line gets clogged because we get so many calls. And uh, I wanted to announce uh, that there is a show coming. And unfortunately, I wanted to have Praveen on the show to announce this. It's it's uh, the Sean uh, who's going to be on concert. And also about his business, that's uh, um, um, the dish uh uh, I wanted him to to announce a little bit. He he's helping us together on that. So, I I unfortunately uh, I don't know what's happening on our phone. Uh, and you can call us at the office five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. Check our website piralilaw dot com p e e r a l l y law dot com for debt settlement. Your debt settlement attorney dot com. And follow us on Facebook on facebook.com slash law show. Thank you very much, Saad. And uh, this is Shah Purali. I'm signing off. Listen to us on Friday night, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. We'll have a great show tonight also. And hopefully I'll have Pravin with us on, on this Friday. I apologize. I know, I think we were having some issues with the phone. And you can call our office, 510-742-5887. Thank you very much for listening. And don't miss our show on Friday night. Thank you. Shapirali and his law group focused on immigration law and debt settlement. They have successfully handled